One of the most important things, by the way, in most plays is um, underwear. Now, you know, when you say, uh, oh, those Victorians were so, so, such prim and proper people, you know, they always sat so straight. Well, they were wearing corsets. And it's very hard if you have stiff state corsets coming up and holding you up to do this. You can't. So again, it's not a matter of playing style, because that's how they were, but find what it came from. If they say, oh, you shouldn't cross your legs, I say, for the purpose of the exercise, do what they did. They wore two petticoats. I defy you to try to cross your legs. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> then you won't cross your legs. You will sit because of, not because it's stylistically correct. If your sleeve, instead of being a latex uh, a sleeve that bends very easily and it's very tight, and it's so, you'll find that you can't bend your elbow. Do you see? You can only bend it so far. And that if you pour, if you have a beautiful, in an Oscar Wilde play or something, everybody's always, you know, playing style. Uh, if, if you have a long ruche hanging here that it took your housekeeper an half an hour to press properly, you won't want to dunk it in the tea. You will make sure that it's up. If, if it's good manners not to get a lot of fingerprints on the, on the silver teapot, you will pour in order not to get the fingerprints on. Then you will find the behavior. Uh, and, of course, I, I know that nothing has changed in the human psyche except fashion and social morals. But we always got mad. We always fell in love. We always were possessive. We were always slightly neurotic. You know, all the things that we think are only us today have always been true for the human being. And... Uh, thought for this exercise to take a character. This is the first time you take a character that you may be going to work on or that you always wanted to work on and take him out, take him or her out of the crisis in which they find themselves in the given play and give them a simple task, that something they might do every day or that they something I did yesterday or I'm going to do after the crisis is over. So that I start to discover all the sources that make it different than it is now. And to see if I can put my character into a time and place so that I believe I lived there then. That is really the purpose of that exercise.
was divine. Mark, we walked into another time and place. From the moment you walked in. I, I had some, thank you. I, I, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I, I mean, it was just so right on. It was just superb, truly. Now, but did you have any questions? Well, I, I, just, I can tell you love the character. I do. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> and now, what is so successful? First of all, the trouble with some of the objects which are difficult is that we run out of inner objects under non-crisis circumstances to keep our attention going while we get dressed. Button buttons, lace shoes. Put a, see, that was your bustle. I mean, it was just... I tight, oh. put it on very tight today. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to... And then the, the tightness in relationship to the shoes. No, it was wonderful. The, uh, uh, what you gain from this exercise and how to work on it, this was an example. You won't see it much better than that. And now if she played this character, three quarters of the work on the Who Am I and her faith in historic time and place has been conquered. It's just wonderful. And it never is a costume, you see. That's the, the dangerous thing. She's not putting on a costume. She's putting on her clothes. She's washing her face, not somebody else's. She is uh, uh, hanging up that particular blouse for tomorrow. I mean, everything. Just wonderful. Every single object you selected in terms of a different time and place and making that habit rather than something strange. Or they did, they would, they would light a, a, a lamp like that, they would light their candle like It was you doing it as though it were your candle, your room, and your, it was just wonderful. Literally, not one criticism. Of course, each one of the exercises you can do 10 times or more, which is why people, when they study with me in the beginning, after two, two or four terms, they're still on the second or third exercise because I don't expect you to race through them. So by the time you get to this exercise, you've been a long time doing the others. When you, and, and once you've exhausted this, then there's a wonderful way of combining them. So you do Charlotte outdoors, right? Charlotte outdoors waiting for somebody. Charlotte having a picnic by herself outdoors. Uh, or an, a any kind of character that gives you trouble in terms of faith. Um, and just combining exes, you can see they all easily combine. Uh, Geraldine Page studied with me, God knows, uh, all, in all in all about six years, not consistently. And she would come back. And the last few times she came back in the, in the last few years, she only did object exercises. And I said, why? She said, when I did them, I didn't know how valuable they are. She said, it gives me a chance to work on all these, the staggered conditions, you know, how many, when we put one, we put being in a hurry while I'm hot with a headache and, you know, and I really stagger conditions. That's a very useful exercise. But, uh, no, this was superb. Okay, very good. Thank you.